everybody, Eileen Godwin here again to share with you another card. This one is fairly easy to make. I'll share the materials that I'm using with you as we go along. Starting off with a piece of uh, 5 by 7 inches of Centura Pearl cardstock. Um, I'm using the reverse white side. I do like that for my distressing work. I've scored a line using a scoreboard and a score tool, scoring tool four inches up from the bottom of the cardstock. Take a piece of copy paper because you really want to protect the bottom half of the card and keep it pristine white um, while you're using distress inks on the top part of the card. So I'm using copy paper and a piece of tape just to make sure that it's covered. Then take your distress inks and an acrylic block, a large acrylic block. If you haven't got an, a large enough acrylic block, you can use a Pyrex dish, the bottom of a Pyrex dish or a glass pie dish. I've done that before now. <laughs> take your distress inks a variety of different colours but the brighter the better and um, pop them over pop them over the acrylic block randomly mustard seed I think move those out of the way and taking a mini mister and some water Just mist them lightly. You don't really want them to be drippy. And then down you go onto your cardstock and really press heavily. Oh, that's not too bad wipe off the block and then taking a piece of kitchen towel or any other absorbent material just take up any really wet areas of the distress ink You can use a heat gun if you want to, but I prefer to let it dry naturally because the colours seem to be more vivid. So we'll move on to the second part in a moment. Okay, so the cardstock is totally dry. I'm taking either a black archival ink pad or in this case a uh, Versafine Onyx Black. You just need to let this dry for a little bit longer than you would the black archival. And I've got the Designs, Designs by Rin water droplet stamps. I use these all the time. They are just fabulous. Um, they're on a stamp press as you can see. and. You'll notice the arrow on the back, it's because it's sometimes difficult to see which way up these stamps should be. And down we go, keeping the bottom of the cardstock still covered with copy paper. Press firmly, don't touch the outer edges of your stamp press, just in case you haven't used one before. You need to keep the pressure firmly in the middle. Ink again. Make sure your copy paper doesn't slip. Press firmly down once more on the other side. That's 
that's it I'm happy with that remove the copy paper at the moment you'll notice there's a gap here underneath that isn't a problem I have some ink on my mat which could be a problem go we're almost completed the top part there's more to do to it and then taking some ribbon and it doesn't really matter what ribbon you choose because you aren't going to see it so you're not going to see this so just pop that over so that it gives me a nice neat edge and then tuck the edges in around the corner and some scissors um, if there are any handy please Mr Director <laughs> that's lovely thank you <laughs> oh dear okay so that's fine. Now, some of you will have noticed that maybe that isn't as straight as it should be, that ribbon, but it really doesn't matter because the butterflies are going on and that will cover them up. And if it doesn't, then I'll make them, <laughs> if you get my meaning. Now, I just want to finish off the water droplet stamps. So taking the water again and a paintbrush, small thin paintbrush, and piece of kitchen towel uh, plus some copy paper again to protect the bottom of your work going to remove some of the distress ink from the water droplets I won't do them all but you will get the um, idea because it makes them appear to be more transparent if you remove some of the ink so just blot them and it makes them paler against the ink in the background I'll do a couple more hope you can see this okay it's um, quite Quite a good effect so do all of them just the bottom part and then taking a white pen that tiny little dot at the top of each water droplet needs a piece or it needs to be highlighted and I use this white pen white pigment ink to do that now bear with me because I need to do them all so that you get the overall effect of the whole thing now as you're aware distress ink sometimes will soak into pigment ink so do uh, ink up the tiny dot for a while, uh, the first time, and then let it dry, and then you may need to go over again and ink it again as the distress ink colours the pigment ink. Ensuring or trying to ensure that your fingers are staying quite clean and the bottom of the cardstock is not getting contaminated. I think that I've got most of them now. That's a close up for you. It's a really good effect. Clever stamp. Okay. We'll come back to that because there's still more to do to that one. Now we're going to the bottom of the card 
and I'm going to stamp the word. And now this is from a Sheena Douglas set that I used some years ago. I'm afraid I don't know the name of the set. It was a whole um, plate of different words and sentiments that she did some time back. But I really love this stamp. With love. You may be tempted, and it is better to be honest, to use a large Misty for this, uh, the you know the Misty stamp set press. But um, I've left that downstairs, so I'm just uh, winging it with this this block. So wish me luck. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start the whole thing off again if it isn't straight. So away we go. Versafine Black Onyx Ink. Mm, that's acceptable. Yep, that's okay. We're nearly there now. The butterflies are cut with a Sizzix stamp and die cut set. Uh, there's no name on here. It's from Hero Arts, so I do know that. But there's no actual name on the packaging, but there is a number. 657773. That's 657773. Obviously, I haven't used the stamps. I've just used the butterfly dice and cut out a few, quite a few in fact. Coloured them with um, Distress Inks, the same Distress Ink colours that I use for the top of the card. And I've stamped them, but I've stamped them with another Designs by Rin stamp, but this one's called Sea Bubbles. And you get two stamps in this set. You get a large one. And then you get this smaller one, and the smaller one is ideal for uh, for the butterflies. So then you take your card back and decide where you want to put your butterflies. I'm using for quickness these uh, sticky pads. I'm not cutting them down. Just taking the back off and looking at the original card design to give me a guide. Uh, put the butterflies on wherever you want them to be but of course especially over the ribbon area because you want that totally covered and that will bring the top half of the card into the bottom half of the card well that's the idea anyway so that's that one there easy isn't it really easy it's a nice colorful card I mean you could use any sentiment you like happy birthday have a good day um, that one's a little, no, no, that's okay. It doesn't matter if it goes over the edge of the card. Artistic license. <laughs> right, there's another one here. In the red. I've done one purple one. I do like this. It's from, um, is it? Violent, violet, I don't know, vibrant violet, something violet, anyway, from the new Distress Ink range. Vibrant, I can't remember. So, I'm going to pop that one there. Now that has covered the whole of the ribbon. Oh no, look, I've got a piece of, um, oh there it is, wilted violet. Thank you, Mr. Director. Wilted Violet. Superb. I've got a little bit of black ink on the bottom of my card. Now, don't despair if you do that, because with the white gel pen, I'm going to make it disappear. It has to be right. It has to be totally white. Now, one more butterfly, and I think that I'm done with this. There's a couple of other bits that I want to show you, and then we're totally finished. Now, I'm just going to lay that up on black because uh, you get a, a better idea of the total look. 
Now I'm taking a gold gel pen and where you've got uh, say muddy looks that you don't like you can um, tart them up a bit with this gold gel pen and in fact I'm going to use, to remove that again, change my mind I'm going to use this gold gel pen to totally frame the distressed inked area here um, I'll do this quickly I'll just do the one side but you get you get the look that I'm after here and go all the way around the edge of the distressed ink area um, and then this part here we just randomly do a few squiggles and any area of distressing color that you don't like you can sort of give it added interest by putting white or gold pen over it a little bit down here and just makes it look glittery now the other thing I want to do is just to show you okay I want to show you I want to show you how to um, liven up your butterflies with the white pigment ink again. Just going to fill in a few of these dots just to make them pop out. You can use white enamel from Ranger, Ranger's white enamel. I, in fact, I've used that on a card a couple of times. I really love it but it takes a while to dry. You may need to reapply this white ink as well as before the distress ink will um, soak into the white colour and uh, until it's thoroughly dry. So you may need to reapply. But it look, it really zings it out, doesn't it? I love this look. You need to be a little bit more careful than maybe that I am, but you can see already that you will need to reapply. The ink is, is getting saturated here again. So, I think we're there now. And what we're going to do now is put, what I'm doing now, is to put the card onto a little bit of black matting and layering, layer it up in whatever colour you like. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I've had fun. See you then. <laughs>